over the world. There were people of all kinds of nationalities there, and he couldn't figure out why the hell this would be the case. In 1965, in America, in an NSA facility, Japanese people, Indian people, you know, all kinds of people. And what is this mosaic showing? A city on the dark side of the moon that looks like, like megalithic architecture. He said it wasn't made of metal. It was made of some kind of artificial stone, stone that you could make giant buildings from out of. Mm -hmm. And he saw obelisks, he saw domed buildings, lots of polygonal buildings. Uh, and so, you know, it, this guy expected he was going to hear this on the evening news for years, and it never happened. And uh, we also have then the testimony of um, Ingo Swan, who I think Ingo Swan mm -hmm. uh, was tasked in 1975 by, uh, well, you know, the thing is, he actually doesn't know who he was tasked by. He was working for SRI who was contracted by the CIA, Stanford Research Institute, had a CIA contract to develop remote viewing, and he was working for them. But some other guy called Axelrod came and grabbed Swan from out of that unit and said that his mission took precedence, and he had a higher clearance, and he took blindfolded him, put him on a helicopter, took him to some underground facility somewhere, and had him remote view the dark side of the moon. And I think that it's the photographs of the, of the type that Carl Wolf saw that now we're talking a decade later, right? They want a remote viewer to go look at what these photographs were showing. Wow. And Swan, does, and Swan doesn't know this, you know, he's blind to the target the way that a remote viewer always is. So he starts describing this shit and he's describing standing at ground level in a city on the dark side of the moon and there's roads going in every which direction and he sees saucers parked on the sides of craters. And the most disturbing thing that Swan reported was that these Nordic people who live there use slave labor. Mm. They have large groups of, believe it or not, naked slaves mining the craters. Now, how that's possible, it suggests that there's an atmosphere. There's uh, some kind of dome or something over it. And these poor people live in like uh, ramshackle uh, housing that's like created by putting a mesh over a crater. And they're all sort of herded in there like cattle. And they're using the slave labor on the moon. So these are the people who in my uh, novella, Artemis on Veil, vale, I depict as the Olympians, these sadistic, tyrannical overlords who, mm -hmm. despite the fact that slave labor is utterly unnecessary considering their level of technology. I mean, they could build like yeah. robots to robots. Craters for them, right? They, for some reason, they, uh, they like to, maybe it's penal servitude. I don't know. In any case. But the slaves are hybrids, right? They're not humans. Uh, well, these particular ent now in my novel, in your I novel, there it's a hybrid factory or whatever you want. In to my novel, I talk about a number of things. First of all, I talk about how the gray robots, these biomechanical grays, which have been seen with the Nordics by a number of abductees, how they're manufactured on the moon. And so inside the moon, there's like a gray production line. All right. The grays are being rolled off the assembly line in there. Mm -hmm. Little munchkins who work for these Nordics. Oompa Loompas. <laughs> yeah. Or Oompa Loompas. <laughs> and then you have also all kinds of bizarre hybridization experiments going on inside the moon that they're genetic laboratories and so forth that I, you know, describe in there. Uh, but what Swan saw were human slaves hmm. working in craters on the surface of the moon, like chain gangs in the old days, you know, like the naked slave laborers in Rome. Right. That is, yeah, that is really grim, especially, uh, well, both the, the hybrids and for those of you who might have watched the latest Guardians of the Galaxy, there's these themes about evolution and moon and all that other stuff. I guess the question is, Jason, why did we pretend to go to the moon in 69 or did we go? Well, we can leave that off the table if you want that debate. And that's a twofold. And are, why are we trying to go to the moon with rocket call Artemis, ironically talking? I mean, the elite know this. It's not like, why are they playing this uh, dog and pony show? So here's what I think about that. And I, I briefly do touch on this in Artemis Unveiled when I talk about President Kennedy. Because, um, okay, let me just take a 
make a, a, a side detour.